For yeah, like 40 absolutely. minutes in, like, shouldn't we be talking about time travel? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So yes, <laughs> time travel is the topic of discussion today. Is it? Yes. Okay. The magical, thought... mystical time travel. Okay. Is it a wonderful, magical mystery tour? Are they waiting to take you away? Uh, somebody's probably waiting to take me away. Huh. They don't have asylums anymore, so... Okay. Yeah. You didn't yeah. pick up on my reference. Fine. Mm. Great. Mm. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Let's get it started, Johnny B. <laughs> I guess we can get going. Might as well, since Gary's... Time is slipping by. Time is, time is slipping by here. Um, so what are we doing? We're starting at the end. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, so Stay everybody, classy. Yeah. Thanks everybody's for listening. Rec- yeah. What's everybody's recommendations? <laughs> What's everyone's recommendation for time travel? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us right now, quick. Yep. Oh, but we're, ri- we're rewinding really quick, so you what? can't, you can't hear us. Take that and rewind it back. <laughs> what? Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I'm your host, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me, as always, are my co-hosts. Gary Elmore. And Neil Riley. And we are welcoming back to the forefront our favorite person in the entire world, the one and only Aww. Ian Webb. Ian, welcome back. Hey, th- thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, Ian, for those of you that don't know, even though we've had Ian on almost, al- almost half of our episodes <laughs> up to this point, um, <laughs> is the host of the uh, uh, popular podcast, uh, Movies So Bad They're Good, and the fa- ever-growing in popularity Facebook group, Movies So Bad They're Good, Midnight Cult Classics and Camp. Uh, hey, so uh, I think I had mentioned this in a podcast earlier at one point, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Ian, how's that going with uh, that Martin guy, that uh, uh, documentary oh. filmmaker from Canada? Oh, oh that are you seeing somebody do... new? That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> he's not a po- he's not oh, oh, okay. he's not doing oh, podcasts. Oh, oh, he's okay. not, yeah, right. Ian's not cheating on us. Okay. Ian's not cheating on us. He's just we have to share him. As far he's as very you know. popular. That's, yeah. As far as we know, that's, that's very true. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so tell tell everybody a little bit about that, uh, how that uh, uh, how that came to pass, and how we got connected. Well, I, I things are uh, still in the works, and uh, I actually it's kind of a little bit more in privacy at the moment. But um, I'll just I'll just say that there's this filmmaker who's interested in covering uh, some of the movies that we cover, and the movies so bad they're good. Podcast and he he got a hold of me in the group and he, he was thinking about starting a documentary about some of these movies and he would like to uh, interview me and uh, actually yeah. I I got you Johnny in on it too so yeah that's right but nice, um, nice. it's still like very in the beginning of the works so yeah we're um, early early stages we yeah, wanted details with COVID yep. and everything going on. Yeah. Is it just going to be a but, new Mystery Science Theater 3000? Um, no, <laughs> it, it's not. Well, no, it's going to be more of um, like documentary type. Like, yeah, it's it's celebrating. We'll just say it's it's celebrating basically what Ian's group epitomizes. It's it's uh, celebrating horrible horrible films. Yeah, let's, let's uh, just leave it at that. Okay. He he actually <laughs> just had a, a movie that came out uh, called Hail the Deadites, and that's about the Evil yeah, Dead franchise. That. So mm-hmm. that uh, I I don't know if it's in theaters right now, but it should be coming out here pretty soon. Yeah, I thought because it looked like they were making the uh, festival circuit, and they were doing pretty well uh, at a lot of the horror fests mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and he, he had talked about getting interviews with a lot of the cast of evil dead. And, uh, so that, yeah, that, that, that sounds, that sounds really cool. I love, I love it when those documentaries, and that's one of the reasons why we actually started the podcast too, was checking out the behind the scenes Mm -hmm. of what actually happens with the production and the fans themselves and how you finance and like that, that's the part that's cool. Like, you know, it's, it's interesting to, you can see the movie and then you can dissect it and analyze it, Mm -hmm. but there's so many more components to the entire thing. Um, and, and, and that's, that's the really cool part. So I I love docs like that. Um, but that's cool. So we will, we'll keep our, uh, we'll keep our, uh, ears peered, ears, peeled, yeah. peeled, peered for it. Peered, ears peered, peered, peered yeah. for uh, it. Our ears, our ears pierced. <laughs> does, uh, <laughs> does the, uh, documentary have a title yet? No, or whatever not the yet. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, yet. They're, okay. they're in the very beginning of the works. Like, I think okay. that the, um, the guy, his name is Martin, just came up with the idea and then contacted mm-hmm. me about it right after that. Uh, okay. just looking for people to interview and also asking for recommendations of 
so, uh, lots of uh, so bad they're good type movies, and so I think he's just doing research right now. Yeah. Okay, we just uh, watched a movie the other day that um, I don't know if you're aware of it, I, but I did message you about this, it, Ian. Uh, it certainly, I think, famous. would be right up oh, your it, proverbial alley. <laughs> what the hell was it called again? Uh, it was called um, uh, Diamond, uh, Cobra, and uh, versus, the White Fox. Versus the White Fox, yeah. yes. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I remembered that. I can't believe you remember that. I, I just know. remember two animals and... And yeah. that was it. I mean, the movie was literally, it was, what would, the funny thing about it was, it was written, directed, produced, yep. shot. You had that whole trifecta of It was goodness. the Neil Breen effect. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. The Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they do and, everything themselves. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell. Yes, you absolutely can. The uh, stock animated footage. Um, oh so, uh, Ian, I don't know if you've heard of that movie or I seen it. I haven't. Okay, um, but it's but definitely worth the $25 on Amazon to watch it. It's not $25 on get the hell out of here. <laughs> that is, would not ever pay that much money. Uh, yeah, Johnny told me about it, but I, I actually forgot about it immediately after he told me. So I'm, I'm glad you brought it back. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to check it out. I, I think I was really busy at the time, and I was just like glancing at my phone. I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's gonna that's gonna be absolutely perfect for your group, and I think uh, it's just kind of getting a resurgence of popularity. So you'll be uh, riding on the tip of that uh, yeah. real spear. Well, yeah, go ahead and uh, get on the <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and get in the group and make a post about it if you'd like. I don't really do social media. Uh, I'm kind of a uh, luddite. He, he leaves. Yeah. A luddite. Well, Johnny, the, go ahead and get on the group and make I'll, a post I'll, about it. I think I am part of that group. I don't you, know. I think, I think you are. I think okay. I invited both you and, and Neil. Then you invited me people. to like a meet group or something? Face hooks is what you're thinking yeah. of. Yeah. That's a <laughs> Facebook group, essentially. It's just a bunch of jokes about Meat. anal sex and eating buttholes. And oh, my God. I didn't even realize yeah. that. I'm really glad I did I think not join that. Schnick yeah. invited me to that one. Yeah. That sounds like Schnick. Yeah. Sounds like something right up his alley. Yeah. He enjoys doing that kind of stuff. Speaking yeah. of uh, anal jokes and buttholes, Time Machine movies, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> Thank you. I am an expert in segues. <laughs> Uh, tonight's episode, we're going to be diving into uh, time travel and uh, time travel in film and the subgenres of an already technical subgenre in time travel itself. Uh, so we'll be talking about the different uh, sects that fall into the time travel category underneath that, uh, talking about our favorite ones, overhyped ones that are just so horrible that they're amazing. And uh, kind of just jumping into that. Um, so I guess for, for uh, just for for those that don't know, um, and Ian, I did kind of want to I kind of wanted to uh, give this hand this one off to you because you had mentioned you did want to speak a little about it. Um, just about uh, uh, we we're talking about the origins of time travel mm. and such. And you had mentioned to me uh, being a fan of H.G. Uh, Wells novel, The Time Machine. Um, oh, for those yeah. of you that for those of you that have seen the awful remake um, <laughs> that was made a l just a little bit ago, um, it is based on a book. It is based on a very, very famous novel. Um, so uh, based on that. So I was talking with Vanessa. I was talking with Vanessa uh, earlier today, and we were debating if the time machine was actually the first novel ever written based on time travel, or were there other ones Prior to that, that kind of dove into it without even thinking about it. I had kind of argued the point of A Christmas Story, of Dickens' A Christmas Story, uh, being a little bit of that. Um, it's kind of got that alternate universe, the It's Wonderful okay. Life life type feel. Uh -huh. um, and that, that was written a little before. <laughs> I, I just, I wouldn't consider A Christmas uh, Carol a, a time travel. I don't know. Well, why not? Uh, just because it seems to be more... Um, you know, based on sort of, uh, you know, delving into the psyche of like, what could, you know, what changes can a person make, you know, and, uh, I, I don't know. It just, it doesn't seem like a time travel movie to me at all because he's only glimpsing, uh, like through a glass darkly his future sure. and then through the rosy colored lenses of his past, you know, it's not like he's actually there. Right. He's just as you said, it's a wonderful life kind of witnessing that. Right. So but maybe to answer that question, we should define what makes time travel movies and the different genres within that. Boom. Time travel definition. Go Neil. <laughs> Drop that proverbial mic. Apparently. 
<laughs> All right, so let, let, let's make one rule. If you're going to have a time travel movie, it's got to be like physically going to a different time, meaning that you can impact or change things. So you have to be able to like go back there and change things. Well, so I that, disagree see, with you on that. I, I would okay. completely. I would also disagree. Uh, with me you. too. Ahead, well, okay. It, it probably at least in, in one category. Okay, now right. I'm, I'm not talking about like. You know, the whole sort of grandfather's paradox where, like, can you change something or can't you change something? But, like, you're, like, physically there and not just observing. So, okay. like, so, using yeah. an actual time machine and stepping into another time. Right, right. Rather than just sort of seeing what's going on. So, let, yeah, let me amend it because uh, there are plenty of movies, I think, that you can't change the outcome of things. Okay, okay. Does, does that make everybody happy? I'm happy. Neil, are Neil, are you happy? So are you, are you saying that like you would not consider Groundhog's Day a time travel movie? Hmm. I don't think I would either. I don't think I would. Um, certainly there is a time aspect of it, but I don't know. There's something about it just being the repetition or the, the time loop, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't seem... I don't know. I, I, I don't think I would. And I, I guess I can't really well, explain My understanding it is time loops is a subsect of the genre. It, it is it is one that is widely considered to be one of the larger subgenres of time travel. Okay, like Looper? Uh, Oompa no, Looper? Looper would be... Uh, God, what, what was Looper again? Um, you know, I actually How was, could that not be a time that, travel that's movie? Like no, a, no, say, yeah, that, Looper's weird. Yeah, Looper lo breaks lo Looper. rules. Looper does break rules. Looper breaks a lot of rules. <laughs> that movie is definitely a mind fuck for sure. Um, That's the one with uh, Bruce Willis, right? I'm thinking about yes, the... Okay. Joseph, All right, yeah, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yes, yes, it is. Um, yeah, see, I mean, so I, I, you know, I'd have to... The only reason I'd have to disagree with, with the Christmas Carol idea is the fact that they gave him... Technically, if we're looking at time travel, time travel looks at... Usually, the multiple universe, not even the universes, multiple realities that could be. Okay. Or if you look at whatever Stephen Hawking's theory, that multiple universes are currently running side by side and parallel with each other as okay. we're speaking right now. So in another universe, there is you and, and I talking, but we're talking about something else. Yeah. In and another maybe, universe, there's like an interesting conversation happening now. Something okay. like All that. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got you. Know, you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you're an Asian dude and I'm yeah. black or something and, you know... We're both gay. I don't know. You know, <laughs> there's just a lot of different, there's a lot of different things. Or we're living in a different city or something. Um, so with that, with a Christmas Carol, they basically the go the ghosts come back and they're talking about the alternate realities or the other re realities that are currently moving in parallel with with Ebenezer Scrooge's reality in the main story. So there's the main story, and then they're talking about look here's where your life could be. It's like the uh, Back to the Future. It's the what? Well, I, I mean, like he, he goes back into to like look at his past, right? And you know that's that's, that's yeah, that's yeah. that's the past portion. I'm, then, talk, I'm talking about when they get to the present. So the ghost of Christmas present, the ghost of Christmas future. But the, so they, when they're in the present, it's just talking about like what's actually going on. Like he goes to Bob Cratchit's house. Um, oh right, right. That, yeah. that, that's right. Yeah, they're talking. Okay. He goes to his. That's right. He goes to right. his brother. He goes to uh, goes yeah. to his brother's the house. The SS Minnow, John. The SS <laughs> Minnow. Oh, that was from Scrooge. So okay. So then the one portion that they would go would be into the future where right. he dies and mm -hmm. no one comes to see him at all. Right. Tiny Tim passes away. Yeah. And so forth. That is that second parallel reality that's following his current reality. Does that make sense? Okay. So so in, so in essence, he is traveling between two dimensions he is traveling between two times well i mean like it's That's time travel but i mean like it's one not, version i'm sorry i yeah, guess there's yeah. a lot <laughs> but I, I mean like it's it's not like parallel because he's like going into the future so he's jumping ahead you know it's not like it's an alternate reality occurring right. at the but same if time if there's two lines running parallel one on top one on bottom and they're just running uh -huh. and then this this top one is is all of us here talking and this or the, this top one is Scrooge and, you know, his current life. The bottom one is him if he continues the current life. At some point, there's that jump between the two lines that says, if you make this decision, you'll continue on this trajectory. And okay. if you make this decision, you'll go into the other reality. Okay. I see so, what you're saying. I, yeah. So, yeah, you can make an argument for both sides, obviously. I, I, I would consider it to be the first unintentional 
time travel book. And maybe there's there might even be another one that I'm not bringing up or that I'm not familiar with. Um, but I don't know. That's just my two cents. All right, good point, so, Johnny. Good point. So, uh, what wh- I guess, what do you? So, so, anyways, Ian, I'm sorry, we, we got off that topic. <laughs> so, um, did did you kind of want to give everybody a, just a brief synopsis on uh, on the time machine? Uh, well, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, the time machine. Uh, yes, written by H. E. Wells. I'm not sure when it, it was. It was definitely a long time ago. Um, yeah, I believe it was 1890. Yeah. 19, um, 1890s. They, which they made a movie about in 19. 19- 60 something. 1895. 1895 was the was the published book. book. Anyways, keep yeah. Going. And so, yeah, about 60 years later they or 70 years later that they, they made a movie about it, which was right. for its time really well done. It was it really it was travel sequences with the stop animation and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then of course Hollywood had to go and make a shitty remake of it. Uh, right which, which, which started out pretty good actually it wasn't bad until they got to the future and it's millions of years later and all the humans are still speaking english and stuff and that that's really dumb well i yeah. i mean i think that the <laughs> story you know okay well what, what I, anyway, anyway yeah, yeah, i'm, I'm getting i'm getting off off topic so what the time travel or what the time machine is is he creates his own time machine. And it is H.G. Wells himself. He he is his own main character in this book. Uh, he creates a time machine. And he tests it out. He goes a little bit into the future. And what's cool is you could see in stop animation everything around him that that moves on itself. Like uh, you can see mm-hmm. the sun and the moon going by real quick. And uh, so he goes, uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred years into the future. Uh, or no, he, I'm sorry. He he goes into, I guess World War II. I think, and he sees he meets the grandson so. of a buddy of his, and then there's a nuclear explosion, he, and he gets into the time machine, but he gets knocked out at the same time, so he, he passes out while he's going into the future. So he goes millions of years. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm certain about a time into the future where humans have evolved into two different species. Uh, the ones who stayed right. on the upper ground, I forgot what what their the, species is called. Il- Do you guys remember? Il- 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 yeah. Il- How do you remember that? I, I don't know. It's a popular movie when I was a kid. <laughs> When you were uh, a kid, that was a long time ago. I know. In which you had a time machine, huh? Oh yes. <laughs> but yeah, what what's really interesting is that they well they didn't evolve, they devolved into like this like cattle like creatures that are like right. completely the Morlocks. brain dead. Yeah, the Morlocks, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the more yeah. The uh what what is that, Morlocks? Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they, it was they were Morlocks. yeah, they were like yeah. essentially they were essentially like hairy trolls that yeah. lived underground. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the second and, one you know, that that, yeah. uh, that they went underground during the nuclear explosion, and then they right. evolve into like ape like creatures. But they yeah. they're still like they're still smart enough to create machines and lure the right. the other the, the uh, ab- above ground species in. So mm-hmm. right. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a very basic example of time travel. It's just like just going forward and going back. And but it was still the it was still the it, it set. I mean, that novel itself. I mean, it set the precedent of absolutely. what we know time travel to be today. Today. Yeah. Um, H.G. H. Wells was really popular for doing that. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, there's another movie about time travel that talks about H.G. Wells, you know, is reading. there. And which yeah. one is that? Oh, well, is we'll it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> the, no, yeah, the no, remake. Is it the remake of the time machine? <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay. It's the really shitty one that was made like 20 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think the time machine was uh, the first, at least, story or novel that I can think of that, uh, you know, talked about and focused on time travel as a main aspect on of the purpose, story. Yeah. Intentionally, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it gave everybody the idea that you could create a, a machine to put you into a different into a different time as right. wherever you want and like you could just set a time and it'll just take you there yeah so 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 kind of kind of piggybacking off that um so time travel it it, it was i don't know 
I, I'm not really terribly well versed in the current genre literary novel novels of the late 19th and early 20th century. I'm not really sure how they categorized everything. If science fiction was a thing, if it was just horror and drama and romance and adventure, and that was it. So science, so excuse me. So time travel at this point, I want to go around really quick. I just want to get everyone's two cents. Where do you guys think time travel falls into genre? I know it, it, it definitely mixes a lot of a mix, but if it had to fall into one, where would you guys say it would fall into? Uh, Neil, let's start with you. I think uh, most time travel probably falls under the science fiction aspect. Okay, for sure. Absolutely. Gary? Yeah, I think uh, science fiction typically is how time travel is induced. There are notable exceptions, of course. Sure. Um, Christmas uh, Carol being one of them, right. maybe. I <laughs> guess. To conclusion? Is that okay. drama yeah. or maybe yeah. horror with the yeah. good, I comedy? Mean, I don't know. <laughs> Well, if you're looking at a Muppet Christmas Carol, I guess it's that a comedy. Is, that is the best version <laughs> that is, that, of that. By the way, I'm going to agree with you. That yeah, is the fucking best. Michael is, Caine and, yeah. and Kermit the Frog mm-hmm. just going at I mean, it together. I Gonzo. Love, yeah, I, I love know? Scrooged, but... Uh, Scrooge was really good. Yeah, that was, just, that go was with, just to play off the original yeah. story. They they actually they kept it, not obviously I mean, verbatim. Kermit and, as Bob Cratchit, brilliant casting yeah. choice. And his son, apparently, as Tiny Tim, just a tiny frog. I don't know the name yeah. of that actual Muppet that played Tiny Tim, but... Well, I, I don't know if it had a name. I think it's just, a, I mean, it's just been yeah. a Muppet that yeah. that Frank Oz created or Jim Henson. Um, anywho, so, uh, Ian, how about you? Well, you know, definitely a science fiction, obviously, sure. but you could also combine genres, too. So it's like sci-fi yeah. action movie easy. or something. Easily, yeah, yeah. And uh, then, that, yeah that's probably a popular that's one. Easily. Yeah, easily, easily one that you could combine. Um, I know normally I go against the grain to just create controversy, but I'm going to have to agree with you guys. I couldn't really think of How boring. anything else that science... Yep, just yep, stop listening yep. right now if you, you already haven't. Yes. Um, I want to thank my mother for being yep. our only constant listener that doesn't you know, get on every episode and speak with us. It has a reason for being on the show. Um, but yeah, no, I'd say science fiction too, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, agreed. You, you, could definitely, you could definitely mix a lot of things together. It's kind of a shame too, because... The time travel aspect is used more as a device than it is as an actual entire genre to base a script off of. You know, if Isn't you think that about pretty it. much what Doctor Who is all about, right? But yeah. the the I guess I would still consider that science fiction because it's built in a world of science fiction. It's built you he encounters all of these other monsters and foreign creatures, aliens, okay. and other people from different dimensions and planets and stuff like that. And I know it's mm. he's traveling through time. Um, uh, you know, I guess uh, fuck Futurama technically. Yeah. At one point, I guess that's just a it's just another device inside it. But you know, that's a science fiction show. I would still consider Doctor uh, Doctor Who a science fiction show as well. Okay. Um, There's some drama me. ones out there, like Time Traveler's Wife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Was that some a t- love stories out there too that are time travel? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah the the, the mix the of lake that we're house? talking about. Yeah, yeah it, in fact, <laughs> technically, boom, the lake house isn't a, I'm leaving. That uh, was my joke for the day. I don't want to do this podcast anymore if we're going to bring up the movie The Lake House. <laughs> that's <laughs> not even a movie so bad it's good. It's a movie that, so bad you want to gouge your eyes. That, that's a great movie. <laughs> You're like, man, are they going to get together at the end? I won't spoil it for you. Bring some Kleenexes. But they do. Yep. Right? I didn't see the end of it. I watched the first five minutes and fell asleep. I no, then you missed out on a hell of a magnum performance by really? Keanu Reeves. I feel like you're just being super well, focused on right now. After he and... put the last letter in the mailbox, he gets sucked into the Matrix. It's crazy. You don't even see it. Oh, coming. good. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so oh, that's what did it. Bill and Ted. There's another travel time travel uh, movie. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. We were going to get to that in our subsext of oh, time okay, travel. Okay, so way yeah. to kill one of the movies we were going to Spoiler alert, Gary. Right. Spoiler alert, Gary Elmore. Uh, anyway, so I, I did, I found a really interesting article I wanted to, uh, it's, real, it's real short here. It, it talks about the six major, uh, it talks about the six major subgenres of time travel um, really quick. And then we're going to, uh, we'll go ahead and just talk about our, our personal favorites. And then we have a couple that we uh, wanted to highlight in particular. Um, but the first one was, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out here to the guys that actually wrote the article. Um, so this was, uh, from, uh, wall you is a site online that does, I guess the science and kind of like geek culture articles. Um, so six different types of popular time travel movies, uh, the first was a grandfather paradox. Uh, the grandfather paradox, um, which they're saying was the most 
famous of the cinematic time travel tropes. The time traveler goes back in time and kills his own grandfather. As a result, the time traveler is never born. But if he was never born, then he would be unable to travel through time and kill his grandfather, which means the traveler would then be born after all. But then if he were born, he would be able to travel through time and kill his grandfather. A good example of this, as we can all probably guess at this point, is Back to the Future. Traveling back to 1955, for those of you that aren't familiar with the film, causes Marty McFly to interfere with his parents' meeting and then erases to rectify the mistake before he's erased from existence. But if he is erased from existence, then he would never have traveled back in time and interfered with his parents' first meeting and thus would have been born after all. Well, I think that they kind of cover that pretty well in Back, which is... Spoiler alert, the best time travel movie of all time. Oh, absolutely, hands down. It, but, like, the cost of doing in those films alone is amazing. Yes. That's, that's accurate. That, is, yeah. that, that, that one I'll agree with you it's on. Because there. Doc Brown says, you know, we're, as you said earlier, Johnny, in an alternate dimension. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question about that statement, actually. Oh. So it's the best time travel movie. Is it the best movie that features time travel, or is it the best example of time travel in a movie? Both of those are correct. Movie that features it's, time travel, but I, not I the best know. use of time travel. Yeah, I, 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 I agree definitely with really yeah. disagree on best example of time travel. Really? Yeah, just because, I don't know. There's just too many issues and plot holes in that. I mean, it just it it, it just I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It, like, I mean, he looks at a picture of himself fading away. I I don't. I personally just I don't like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, so, I mean, you know, it it, it does make sense because if he had to go back in time to save, if he had to go back in time to save himself and make his parents meet, if Marty McFly had to go back, in his original reality, his dad is a loser, they live in a really shabby house, run-down neighborhood, fucking whatever. He goes back in time, helps his parents meet, even though they technically already had, and then when he comes back, there is a different reality. So he went back in time and changed... One thing, it's like if you go back in time, they say, you know, don't step on, don't yeah, step on any effect. grass. The butterfly, mm-hmm. yeah, don't kill it, don't kill a butterfly or an ant or a, anything at all. It's going to change the course of history. Mm-hmm. And then he go, he he changes that, you know. And then his but father he, punches Biff, and what do you know? Then he goes back, and his f- parents are a major success. And but he he comes back to an alternate timeline. Right. That's what I'm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. So if he originally, if his parents to meet in general, um. If, if that's correct. And this is where it gets confusing. Yes. Originally, he was the one. He, so originally, Crispin Glover's character, Marty McFly's father, was the one in the tree being the peeping Tom. Right. On Lorraine. Yes. Marty McFly's mother. Yes. He falls out of the tree, gets a concussion. Super hot lady. <laughs> uh, the Marty McFly's grandfather comes in and uh, he pulls. Uh, his, Calvin Klein. He pu- no, 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 no. Originally, he just pulls Marty McFly's dad inside. Right. And yeah. then from there, Lorraine falls in love with him. But in this alternate timeline, Marty takes on the role of his father and almost ends up sleeping with his mother. So. Which was I guess a, that, that's the big plot hole is what I would agree with. Ian on. that's the only plot hole in Back to the Future that I can point out that I'm like, if this happened. And now they're together. They would have they would have been together either way. But it, w- it wouldn't have mattered if you went back in time. So what what the hell is the point? Yeah, it, it changed the personalities of the parents. Especially his dad, who wasn't so meek and cowardly. And uh, that's true. He it, was not. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it changed, you know, the course of their lives. Yeah, I mean, it ruined Biff's, but, you know. <laughs> it did ruin this. Yeah, it, so, it did yeah, this. I did it's ru- all right. I've just seen better in other f- movies. I'm I'm really gonna have to disagree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, it's just like the last time we're gonna have Ian on the podcast. I mean, yeah. Sorry. Th- thanks for joining us, Ian. <laughs> hey, it was a lot for, of fun. And never come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> let the door hit you the I'm now. And, and, uh, <laughs> and prevent myself from joining this podcast or this episode, <laughs> <laughs> and then I can join many more times. <laughs> Uh, oh man, it's yeah. it, it definitely it gets confusing when you start to add a paradox Logic. into the time travel in s- sequence. Well, I mean they they make it logical in in Doc <laughs> nah, Brown's I'm, explanation I'm of everything in the second one. Yeah, but um, yeah, because I I think that uh, with Back to the Future's version of time travel, and that may be another one of your six that you're going to talk about, Johnny, is like there's you know alternate alternate realities, so you just kind of jump from one to another one. 
Right. Yeah. Which is what I was mentioning earlier with Stephen Hawking's theory. Right. Of, yeah. With, and how a Christmas Carol was that being relevant to it being the first time travel novel. Anyways, um, yeah. So, I mean, and and there's a lot of them. Even even the movies that don't initially intend for it to be based on time travel. Sometimes it Avengers just kind of accidentally. <laughs> yep. Technically, yeah. yeah. Technically, that was know, a huge was, element. Was actually. Uh, and they I'll, did a very good job. They did. It, it wasn't as good as Infinity War, but... No, no. Um, so this, the second one that they said was pretty popular was the alternate timeline, which is um, uh, pretty close here to the uh, grandfather paradox, uh, stating... Uh, so, like, in the film Deja Vu, the uh, Denzel Washington movie, there's a perfect example of the alternate timeline uh, facet of time travel in films. Uh, someone affects the events of the past, thus creating an alternate timeline where his or hers present never occurred or has been altered um for future two yeah 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 which is, yeah exactly back to the future two exactly um and hell i mean there's a lot of them um let me so uh there was another one a uh, predestination paradox so in this paradox the protagonist travels back in time and starts a chain of events that underpin their own present which is pretty much a chicken and egg scenario with a loop sequence that doesn't actually have a beginning um, so one thing that we had read here was that, uh, uh, Christopher Nolan's interstellar was a okay. perfect example of this, uh, where they, you know, the world is ending and they hire Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway and the robot that had the sense of humor Q- of a Q- human robot or something. Yeah. I don't know. yeah something like, like that. Rubik's yeah. Q-bot or something. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Q-bert. Yeah. Q-bert, and then help us. <laughs> they, they use a wormhole to find they to find a new home because the earth is dying mm-hmm. and, for every, I think it was for like every minute they're gone, that's a couple of years on Earth. I think that's when they're on like and the so high gravity planet. One, one, no, no, yeah. it's not the high gravity. It's once they're actually through the wormhole. Okay. They say once you're going through the wormhole into the next dimension or into the next galaxy, mm-hmm. then uh, time, time, will, uh, time is actually shorter here and it speeds up back on Earth. Okay. Um, so with that one, for those that hadn't seen, we're going to do a lot of spoilers tonight. These all movies all came out a long time ago. If you haven't seen them, not my but fault. But time is just um, a product of human illusion. Oh, just shut your oh, okay. dirty all mouth. Right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then, at the, and then at the end, it's been, you know, almost 100 years, and eventually Matthew McConaughey makes it back to Earth. But at this point, he went back in time... He followed, he followed the clues that people from the future had left for humankind to save themselves, and he followed that, but it led him back to when he had first left, and then he gave his daughter the clues to save Earth, and then it took him back to the present. You know, I'm, one of these days I'm just going to do a super cut of Johnny explaining all of Christopher <laughs> Nolan's movies. I think that'll be really fun. Uh, could, oh, you don't want to get started on my tenant one, <laughs> which we will talk about in a second. Oh, God. <laughs> Would you <laughs> mind you if I actually uh, bring up another example of this category? Yeah, the yeah. Terminator. I think that's the, yeah. probably the best one. Yeah, that's, where, a, that's yeah. Yeah, Skynet r- rises up, uh, kills, enslaves all humanity. And the, but John John Connor, you know, he he defeats them. So they send the uh, Terminator back to kill his mom back in 1984 before he was born to right. be, be, to prevent him from from rebelling against them. So he sends Kyle Reese back to the past to protect her, and right. they, they fall in love and they. <laughs> They have sex and give birth to John Connor, so he actually sends his own his, father back in time to protect his mother. And he, it's just he technically is older than his own dad. Yeah, uh, yeah. Depending on what year it is, but yeah. yeah I mean, okay. I mean, yeah. if you look at it, he's older than his own father. That's yeah. I mean, yeah. that's... In, in the present <laughs> slash future. Yeah. So, so the the thing with um. Terminator is it's a movie made in the 80s so it actually doesn't have to have any rules to it and it's still <laughs> awesome so I'm just gonna put that out there okay well That's I, a good point. I, I, yeah. I have That's another good point. I have another one uh 12 monkeys is that the one with Bruce Willis yes yeah. yes so ridiculously Fred. hard to understand and follow a movie yeah, yeah. It seemed like a French kind of movie to me. I hate to use the F well, word. Well, it's Terry yeah. Gilliam, so it is Terry know, Gilliam. Yeah. I was about to say, so that probably explains most of it. <laughs> but, is he the guy um, that did? Yeah, Adventures Twelve Monkeys of is he, he, as a child, witnesses his own murder. So, yeah. like, he goes into the past to try to find 
example clues as as for to not prevent a virus that kills off 99 percent of humanity but he's trying to find information to find a cure to bring back to the future and Mm -hmm. during which time he actually kind of creates some of those things like he gives the idea of the virus to brad pitt who gives the idea to his father who's the scientist who creates the virus and then he gets shot down by the police in front of his own child self. Oh, yeah, and, at the airport or whatever? Yeah, and it just continues to go like that in a loop for, for all time, forever. Gosh. Okay. Like I said, it was ridiculously hard to follow. Again, that's a movie from the 90s, so it does not get the pass <laughs> that the Terminator gets. <laughs> it, does, it does seem like if you, any time travel movies post-2000 typically have a ton of fucking rules and they'll explain it mm-hmm. but it doesn't make any sense just like tenet which we'll get to because i do want to talk about that since we just recently saw it well with um, Inter- interstellar going to that mm-hmm. i mean uh that one made a little more sense that was not as complicated yeah. uh, as some of these and, other ones. and time travel and that was explained a little bit more i think scientifically in terms of right. like being a fourth dimension where right. it's just like moving from one part of the room to the other you can move sure. through time like that which is really hard to picture but uh that's kind of what i got from interstellars yeah no yeah. i yeah i mean I, I i'd have to completely agree um so the next one we had on here which which we had actually talked about earlier um which which gary was saying that he didn't actually consider to be initially um i don't know where you stand now um as a time travel film was the time loop um this one uh, there's a couple different time loops in films um so we had groundhog's day was the one mm-hmm. neil had brought up and we had talked about earlier um edge of tomorrow edge of tomorrow neil was that was a me of. great movie and that was a great movie in general so that, underrated yeah. Yes. Yeah. Live, die, repeat. Nope. Nope. Don't call it that. Live, That's a terrible die, title. Repeat. Edge of Tomorrow is a great title. It is a good title. Yeah. Tom, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, great, I, great I'm job. Glad, I'm glad they decided to change it. Um, and Source Code. Um, uh, these all have the. Uh, they all. It's all the same time loop is formed multiple times. Um, so the time period repeats over and over again in this time loop genre, trapping the protagonist until he does it the right way. So he has mm. to do the right thing exactly verbatim every single time all the way through for him to move on to the next day essentially uh so in movies like uh in looper and frequency which is another one the article had mentioned um says it's a one and done loop uh it's formed and then the timeline continues um in the lesser known movie they had mentioned triangle time crimes and the route v50 um, which i've only seen time crimes uh they'd mentioned there are multiple time loops overlapping each other and that one actually sounds like the most confusing multiple yeah, time loops time interacting with each other. Pretty crazy. <laughs> time crimes yeah. time crimes gave me a headache and I also watched so, it really so stoned when I was younger. He, um, uh, so that didn't help. Yeah, there, there's a guy who goes into a time machine three times within an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's pretty much himself as the three stooges oh running around, but they're all him. And they're I had to watch that movie like three I had to watch that movie like three times in one weekend really? just to get a brief understanding. I mean, you know, granted, I smoked a lot of weed at the time, so, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't quite comprehend everything going on. Kind of my own fault. Um, but just just based on that, I would. So originally, Gary, you had mentioned mm. you didn't consider that to be a valid form I, of time. Travel. And I think I figured out why. OK, was it? OK, because when I think of time travel, you it's traveling from. Like one Distance. point to another. Well, d- just from point to another. So in, in story or whatever. Whereas you, if you have a loop, it's kind of just a cycle. So you're not really moving because you end up at the same point you started. I think so, we can categorize this as a interruption of time, not necessarily traveling through time. Right. And okay. I mean, like, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel bad if I was like, oh, yeah, Groundhog Day is a time travel movie. But just because sure. there's not that traveling aspect that to me doesn't put it in that category but then again sure. there's time crimes like we were just talking about which does fit that yeah where it's where it's multiple it's because he actually weeks, does sequences. enter a time machine mm-hmm. at three times within one hour yeah i don't know if you necessarily i guess i don't know let's so let's 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 take a let's veer off course just a, a little bit for just a quick second do you guys think that for a movie to be considered a time travel movie or in the time travel genre there has to be a time machine involved no. Okay. Ian. Most of the time, yes. There are a few examples okay. without that, but that's rare. 
Okay, Gary? Uh, you need to have some mechanism, I think, for that, because if... Okay. I mean, like, if, if you're not jump like, I mean, any movie takes place over a course of time. I mean, so... It's, that's that's true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Every story ever. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I think you need do need to have like either some uh, natural or artificial mechanism to move through time to be a time travel movie. Like it could be a wormhole. There's a lot of episodes of Star Trek. Sure. Um, ooh, I didn't even think about Star Trek. Yeah, there's a lot of episodes of Star Trek that yep. uh, uh, talk about time travel. A lot sure. of times it's a wormhole. Sometimes, you know, it's uh, Captain Kirk just pushing the... Uh, Sometimes the it's a prey around the sun. sun really, really fast. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 so, again, the eighties. Some sometimes it's a superhero just flying backwards around the world multiple <laughs> so times. Okay, God. so look, that was like kind of golden age of superhero kind of shit. All right, and Superman could do some kind of crazy things. So let's that, not worry right, about that. That's right, because it was in. Uh, I guess that was in the seventies, right? So it got yes. a free pass. Okay. Yeah, seventy-seven. So if it's okay, so pre nineteen ninety, they all get a pass if they. But Terminator 2, that was 90 But that was continuing 90s. a story from the 80s. <laughs> okay. But it was still, Gary, your logic's falling apart. It's the same You're logic apart, of the Elmore. movie from the 80s, and <laughs> it's just continued through the 90s. Okay. And then you get to Terminator 3, and it starts to kind of veer off. Yes, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I'm going into a tunnel. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear you. <laughs> Sorry. We're breaking up. Um, you know, or it can also be, you know, uh, a telephone booth. Yeah. That you might use to travel yeah. to time. Bill and Ted. Oh, Bill and Ted, baby. I still want to see that the new the new one so bad. Anyways, um, can I actually okay, bring yeah. up real quick uh, one movie that does not have any of those? Sure. Time Traveler's Wife. I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, have any of y'all the seen that technically too. or read the book? I yeah. have not. Yeah, I saw the movie. Yeah. So yeah that that one yeah, that was good. very interesting because he just randomly goes through different points in time without like in, in, any device of any sort. He just throughout right. his entire life, he's just jumping around left and right uncontrollably. Yeah. There, right. There's, there's forces. It's the same thing. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, like even with, with looper or, you know, if we, uh, you know, we had brought up, I, st I still think part of it's a wonderful life. The end of it is and now, it's, yeah, I it's mean, time travel. I mean, that's an alternate reality. Uh, so going back to like the time traveler's wife, yeah, that, I mean, that is alternate reality. Now he doesn't I, I change travel through time, but he just jumps into an alternate well, world. I mean, mm -hmm. Technically, I mean, he does technically travel through time because he travels to a different time from the time he's currently in. Does he? I, like, it, like, no, no he goes to the minutes. present <laughs> if he was never born. Right, but exactly. the movie was filmed in the past, so he can never really get to the present. <laughs> Damn it, you're blowing oh, my mind. There, there is an episode. There is a movie called Spaceballs that. Uh, <laughs> there's a oh, scene. Oh, is in that it. A, really? What's that movie about? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a scene in it where they're like trying to like. Uh, watch the uh, the the bad guys are trying to watch the good guys and like they're fast forwarding through the video of the movie that they're in, <laughs> and he's like, "When did we pass it? Just now." Uh. <laughs> anyway, damn it, damn it. How many assholes are in this room? <laughs> We're all assholes, We're sir. We're all major assholes. <laughs> What's wrong, Colonel Sanders? Chicken! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we have a good time. Uh, yeah, time. So, I mean, I, I would have to, yeah, I'd have to go with Ian again that you don't necessarily need to have, you don't need to have a time machine or a wormhole even to no, make but, it a time travel film. But I think it's you can rare. Still... Like, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a, a plot it's device. Rare. So like you, yeah. you need Absolutely. a reason. And uh, yeah, time traveler's wife is uh, probably one of the very, very few that could get away with that. Yeah. Without I, what, that. what I mean I is mean, like you, you, you need a mechanism of some sort. To right. Move Which time, time traveler's yeah. wife does not have. The, there's not there's, it's completely unexplained it's just the, right. this one guy who just happens to travel throughout time or like his, his within his own lifespan he just jumps around between years and mm, yeah. his wife has he's in a relationship with this woman who who just like they both introduce each other to each other at different ages <laughs> you know right and yeah. um but he's just ju jumping through time spontaneously. He has no control over it. It just happens, and that's it. But, I mean, no other movie could really get away with that. So, uh, Gary, you are absolutely correct. You, you need a device or something like that, except for a few movies that 
there's always the exception. somehow yeah there's a slight yeah. exceptions yeah uh so so yeah so 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 moving on past that one um the there was another one that th- this one's probably my least favorite subgenre of of time travel is one that they're calling the time slip um so for those that aren't familiar this one the time slip is a little more subtle than the previous methods as the protagonist or time traveler isn't aware he or she has just made the change um say so they bring in midnight in paris overrated movie um is a fine example of the trope as the time travel occurrence isn't explained unlike a lot of other films with this time trick the character isn't stranded in the new time he encountered but moves back and forth between worlds so basically um and and i'm for those of you that don't know i'm not a giant woody allen fan midnight in paris along with a couple other movies of his kind of had the time slip method sunk in to the core of the actual script um basically the character kind of just randomly jumps between almost two alternate realities Mm -hmm. um from what we were talking about and it doesn't really explain anything um i mean gary you know i hate it when movies don't give any backstory at all and then i'm just like why did this happen like this Uh, okay so if i'm understanding it right the time slip is just the character uh without any impetus of their own or knowledge necessarily moves from points in time yes okay yes unknowingly which makes it all that much more confusing wait the the character has to like be like oh my god i'm in a new time right it can't just be like so the time so uh as, as the protagonist or time traveler is not aware he has just made the change between the worlds so wait a He's minute. Not, that, that's so just, I, that's just like cutting from like one point in a movie to that's another. That's my point. That's, it doesn't make any sense. That's you're, not a thing. You're one, so <laughs> first first scene is in reality A. Second scene is in reality B. And oh, it's a time slip. This guy doesn't know that he's actually the same person living two different lives. But we're going to show you both lives. And he's unaware mm. of it. And somehow the story meets at the end. Okay, so there is a book. <clears throat> uh, and they made it into a movie called Cloud Atlas. Um, <laughs> you really like this movie. You bring it up a I lot. Just, it, 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 so I don't. Um, the book was better than the movie, um, but the movie was very good. But like, I, I guess that's kind of what you're talking about because the, the it's basically about like six people that inhabit, or actually a b- bunch of people, but like there's six stories um, that are in different periods of time over several hundred years, right. and they do all connect, but. The, pe- the spirits of the people that move from one time to another, um, they're like reincarnated. So would that okay. be kind of what that is? I think that's a little different, actually, okay. than what they're trying to do. This one is is showing there's two different... I guess... See, I guess this, this same example comes back to what I was talking about, the Stephen Hawking's theory of multiple uh-huh. dimensions and universes running parallel with each other, linear with each other. Um, that this same thing, there's two different realities running right next to each other. Okay. And then somewhere in the middle, they somewhere in the middle they veer off course and meet each other, and then they veer away from each other again and continue on down the line. Okay. So. I, so basically what happened, so Midnight in Paris, for example, was uh, a love story between, it was Owen Wilson and uh, I think Marion, Marion Cotillard, I think it's been a while since I've seen it, it's been like nine years, um, but they, they meet, they basically fall in love in one night, or one, a couple of nights in Paris, and the two storylines are, you ever seen the, um, the movie, um, what's the name of it maybe y'all can help me it's gwyneth paltrow um sliding doors sliding doors sliding doors yes. it's kind of that's it's it's that same exact thing as sliding okay. doors that's a time slip okay so you know what i'm talking about yeah um so that thing where a few things in or outside of the character and the the characters are all they're all the same people in each other's lives but different things are happening at the same time what was that ashton ashton kutcher movie the butterfly, oh, butterfly effect, effect. Is, it was, it, was that kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what <laughs> this concept that, is that's just that breaks every rule of like any sort of category I, of time not, travel. not made in the 80s or before so yeah that was early 2000s yeah that was uh I, I just I don't I didn't want to talk. Like it was a per- it uh, had a good idea. <laughs> like I, I actually but, thought that movie was okay. What? Yeah. Get out of here, man. That movie was hot garbage. And like that. But that I digress. Well, the idea was good. Like I, I liked where executed. they were going with it. Yeah, very poorly executed. Right. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so I guess if you want, if yeah, if you want to think along those lines of okay. The two realities that that meet at some point and there's a ton of similarities, but different occurrences are happening 
So at, you know, at 10 p.m. in universe A, reality A and reality B, two different things are happening at 10 p.m. But it's happening to the exact same person. Right. Well, okay. yeah, like a sliding door. Okay. She, she's running, to her head <laughs> trying to get on a bus or a train. Right. And then yeah, a kid right. gets in her way. And then it shows the, her life. If, if it, she had made it, the train yeah, and if she did and then not, and she finds out her right. husband's cheating on her and, and whatnot. That's what they're considering to be. Okay. Time All right. So okay. I, I, I can, I can see that one. Um, yeah, so so the time slip is essentially that, um, and and sliding doors was was all right. I mean, I didn't hate that one. Um, maybe it's just a you know, uh, again a, a good thing. idea, but <laughs> just kind of a bullshit movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the last one, uh, which I'll probably, well, the movie that I'm going to bring up for an example, I'll shit on the most, but it's called an ontological paradox. Um, this mm. is where a scenario where through time travel, a future event is the cause of an earlier past. The paradox usually involves the creation of or transfer of an object, an idea, or information. So a good example mm. of this is a movie that is Chris Nolan's newest movie, Tenet, um, which uh, Gary and I had just recently gone to see. Yep. Um, All I the do, movies we've seen during COVID. COVID have just been horrible. It's terrible. Yeah, we saw a couple good ones beforehand, but uh, I, basically whoever the audio mixer was on this film, he made the sound, tr- the score of the movie and all of the background noise that whether it was uh, a train running by mm-hmm. gunshots, the wind just yeah. blowing the music. Yeah. Yeah. The score. Yeah. yeah. It just, it's just, it's louder than all the dialogue. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I only caught about 40% of what they actually said. I don't yeah. know if you caught it was more, a complicated but story. I mean, so you really needed to hear yeah. the dialogue. So you, you seem to, you seem to actually be able to hear more of the dialogue than I. So yeah. you give a little brief rundown of kind of just a quick what happened. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, kids, let's go on a journny through Tenet <laughs> land. Okay. Spit this J, baby. So uh, basically this guy. Um, oh, gosh. I, so but there's this machine that if you go through it, it will reverse time. So you'll be running counter to time, uh, but time will still be flowing normally. So you can actually like run into yourself. Right. Um, Which is a popular trope that happens. Like weird things like if there's a fire near you, it will suck all the warmth from you because it's running backwards in time. What? Hmm. And So the opposite like, of fire is ice yeah i guess Uh, i guess if you got like a cube of ice thrown on you it would burn because instead of uh, a cube of ice would normally cool you off like it would it would be the opposite of that flow so heat would be flowing into you it'd be like a little piece of charcoal on you and neil your reaction there was perfect what yeah that's that's pretty on the nose yeah basically just to short shorten it up basically it's just the past against the future there's really no present technically that's past against the future they're at war with each other and the future is well, the, trying to become rich by giving the past instructions on how to destroy well it was like a temporal war but like right a really it was just really poorly done and like all the just neat interesting hell. stuff doesn't even happen to like 65 percent the way through the movie <laughs> at which point you're already just so done. lost yeah I'm just done. and like it, it doesn't really have um you know the same sort of like I don't remember really seeing many interesting uh, camera angles or cinema, which uh, Christopher Nolan usually does a really good he, job he at. He did use a he used a different DP than he had used okay. for like that, Inception that okay. and the Batman. Yeah, the Batman well, and that leaves Christopher and, Nolan just as a really weird guy. Well, if you look at it too, and then I'll, we'll move on from this. But if you look at it though, um, Jonathan Nolan, his brother, typically always writes the screenplays uh-huh. with him. He did not write. Tenet, at least from what the credits said, he wrote this one by himself. Maybe Jonathan helped him in the background. I have no idea. But usually, when it Jonathan says written by... Attached to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Jonathan is... He's, he's, he's the, like, Chris, whatever you're doing, don't do it. This is a bad idea. <laughs> and so he's like, I'm Chris Nolan. Fuck you. And yeah. he kicked him out of the car. Yeah, Chris now Nolan. he and his brother don't talk anymore. Yeah. We don't know they if that's true. Talk. That, I have could, no idea. that could be he, true. He, yeah. They could be planning Thanksgiving right now. We don't know. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, so so based out of that, based out of the six we had just gone through, I just kind of want to go through the group, and I, uh-huh. I want to see what what is everybody's uh, favorite through that. I think we can kind of guess what everybody's least favorite is from 
how we were talking about them yeah. when we were describing them. <laughs> um, but uh, Gary, what was your favorite out of the six we just went over? Uh, the loop ones, I think, um, can be very interesting, Ooh, uh, just okay. because it, it depends on how you do them, but they can be really clever, I think, um, okay. by like restarting the loop or there's an episode of Futurama where he becomes his own grandpa. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was the best one. one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so I, I think those can be really clever. Um, and I, I like stories that are clever. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Ian, what about you? Yeah, uh, pretty much the same thing. I mean, I, I guess that's the one. It, it's the one of the, loop, yeah. like, uh, yeah, like 12 Monkeys and Terminator, that that one. Because um, it, it's unique, you know. It, oh, it's okay. it's very, it's, it's complicated. It, it, it kind of forces you to think more than other mm-hmm. than just the classic go back in time and change something and then the future is different. It, it, this one is like, it, it's the predestination thing where, like, there's no yeah, changes. Was, yeah. So, you, so you, it's more so mind yeah, blowing. You didn't, you didn't mm. like the so time loop wasn't your favorite. Predestination paradox was. Which one? Was pre so predestination paradox was your favorite? Not, yeah. Not time loop. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, I like the others. Don't get me wrong, but that one's just oh, sure. it happens to be my favorite. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Neil, what about you? Uh, I like the loops, but I'm also a big fan of just the, the grandfather paradox. You know, climate yeah. back oh, to yeah. the future right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and I, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Grandfather paradox was, and maybe it's just because I grew up on the Back to the Future series, and yeah. so I was just introduced to that type of subgenre of time oh, travel like, early on. Yeah, um, Back to the Future is the best, the uh, best time back, travel yeah, movie of all time. Absolutely, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. No, that that's really cool. You know, we really enjoy it when, and I really like those, uh, like any of those novels or, um, there's this really good YouTube series online called, uh, alternate history. And I think, you okay, Oh yeah. yeah, that one's good. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're like, Oh, what if, what if, yeah. um, what if, uh, what if Hitler and the not and the Nazis won world yeah. war two and you know, what would happen if the Roman empire mm. never fell yeah. and what it, happened? And it's, it's like, real scary to think about, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, that's pretty, that's kind of interesting to like, you know, think about what the world would be like, um, if the Soviet union never fell, like, mm-hmm. who, you know, who knows, you know, what if, what if mm-hmm. Lincoln was never shot, you know, right. stuff yeah. like that. Um, so I, I really, yeah, I agree with you. I really like that. Um, so, so, what time is it? Seven, 50. Never mind. Uh, okay, so we're moving on here. I kind of want to, um, we, we already kind of broke down all of the uh, subgenres, I guess, so we'll move past that there. Um, but, uh, Ian, you did say you had a couple of uh, different uh, references for um, uh, the ulterior timeline, single timeline paradox, and uh, predestination oh, yeah. timelines. Um, so, did did you want to go ahead and give a few sure. kind of a few examples of those? Yeah, uh, yeah, the ulterior one. So that one is just so we're on all on the same page. That that's where somebody goes into the past, makes a change, and then. Or not, not makes a change, but he goes into a second t- timeline, correct? Right. It, it's 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 it says ulterior timeline, but it is technically an alternate reality. Like that's right. Okay. It's, it's, okay. it's a second reality. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yes. One. Th- this is uh, actually a, a graphic novel, uh, Flashpoint Paradox, which they made into a. Uh, you know about that, yeah. Of. Uh, uh, I, I, it's late. I'm I'm not thinking for some reason, but like a, a cartoon. <laughs> Um, it's <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so what well, Flashpoint Paradox is uh, it's it's the Flash from mm-hmm. the uh, yeah from DC Comics. He uh, he just he breaks he runs so fast that he breaks the time barrier and he actually goes into wow. the past and and uh, prevents his mom from being murdered when he was a child. Now. Mm-hmm. The problem with that is that that was the event that caused him to want to be a superhero in the first place and set in motion the steps for him to actually become the Flash in the first place. So what happens is he prevents his mom from being killed. Then all of a sudden he's transported back into the present, but he is no longer the Flash. Nobody's ever heard of the Flash, but his mom is still alive. So he's happy. So he's Uh like, I don't need to be the Flash anymore. But uh, the problem is that by making that, that uh, by breaking the time barrier, it, it causes a shift in many events. Uh, for, for one example, the best example is Batman 
when he was a child, instead of his parents being murdered in the alley, he's actually the one who gets murdered, Bruce Wayne. And okay. so his father and mother, they stay alive, but mm -hmm. they're so traumatized by the events that his father, Thomas Wayne, becomes Batman. And and, but he's, becomes he's a different Batman. Th this one, he has no problems with guns or killing people. He, he carries guns okay. and he kills the villains. And he's okay. like a r way darker. And his mom actually becomes the Joker. Mm -hmm. Another example of what changes is Superman. When he comes to Earth, he doesn't crash land uh, in the in Kansas where the Kens find him. He actually crash lands in Metropolis, like right in the middle of Metropolis. Really? And okay. like destroys the whole city. The government takes him and they experiment on him during his entire life and kind of turn him into a weapon. Whoa. Yeah, there's also another one where he ends up in Russia, I believe. Uh, Red uh, Sun. Yeah, that, that's that's oh, yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a different story. That. Different. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's completely unrelated. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so yeah, that's that's one for that one. I, that that's one of my favorites. It's it's a really good uh, graphic novel and a really good animated film as well. Fantastic, man. You know what? Uh, what I was just thinking about that would fall directly into this, but it'll take me a second to, ex well, it may not be, take me a second to explain, but uh, Jumanji, mm. if you think about it, would technically be a time travel movie because of the end. <laughs> yeah. Technically, yeah. there are two timelines. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, uh, I want to say it's Gary two Gary looks time really lines. frustrated and mad at me right now. <laughs> He's like, stop <laughs> killing my <laughs> favorite fucking <laughs> movies, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's two different timelines. I'd say it's, it's one timeline that changes. Like, he, he just changes the, like, I don't know. It's, no, there's, it's there's, all the same. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there, timeline, it just takes place in two different points on that timeline. Well, exactly. I mean, yeah, like, so they just change two timelines the running. Yeah. It's the same thing, like, it's the same thing, like, Back to the Future 2. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, like, I mean, hell, Sliding Doors was technically that. Um fucking uh donnie darko mm. would have been the same thing time um, travel is just always complicated business folks and it just not easy to uh to really explain in a in a movie <laughs> that's true and and same same thing with with the alternate realities you know we talked about uh the terminator series terminator yeah. one two three genesis salvation whatever Ugh. all of them um i know i know right <laughs> i think all of us are rolling our eyes at those ones um, but it, it's that, it's that same exact thing. I think, I don't know from, from what it looks like as far as if you look at all the time travel movies that have ever been made over the last century, okay. Uh -huh. Or 70 years, whatever. If you look at all of them, I guess the most popular subgenre of time travel to be used is the, al the alternate, uh, alternate universe, you know, or the alter, uh, the, uh, yeah. the multiple, multiple universes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, that's it's interesting. the most simple, it's the easier one to explain. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. I guess it, it, it doesn't take as much to explain as I think we were trying to explain all of the other subgenres in more detail, and we were even confusing ourselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it's just, it, you, you don't have to have everything end up in the same place that it began true. with the yeah. alternate timeline. So right. you're a little bit more free, I think, when you're telling a story with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, another one that and so that that one, it seems it seems to me, at least that's mm -hmm. that, that was the most popular, at least um, at least uh, recently. Uh, so so Ian, so uh, let's move on to single timeline paradox. Um, uh, give give us a, give us a one or two examples of that one. And then we'll kind of dive into that. Um, I mean, other than what we've already mentioned, uh, you can bring up what we've already mentioned. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, okay. I, I've well, I was going to say this for when we we're going to talk about our least favorite, but I mean that this is this is a big shitty one. Time cop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time yeah, cop. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's a that's a that's a good example. That's a that's probably a perfect example. Yeah, um, like. Um, any, 
And it, honestly, dude, that's one of my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movies. Oh, really? Next to Bloodsport. I mean, it's just and every movie of Jean Claude Van Damme's is fucking horrible, but it's also <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a fun movie. It, like, it, yeah. it's it, it's like good to just I, I guess have going out on during a party and just you know enjoy it with friends or like something in the background yeah. or something. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, what, what's like when it gets silly? Those where the bad guy beats himself and he tells himself to <laughs> lay off the snacks so he doesn't get fat in the future. <laughs> but Woman then, on the lips, forever on the hips. And, and, and then yeah, and then like I guess it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I think he actually does like lay off the snacks so he actually does get thinner. I'm I don't remember, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't but remember he like time. he sh- shoots himself and kills himself, and then they like. <laughs> morph into each other and just disappear out of existence that sounds like a christopher nolan movie if i ever heard one. Oh, just just absolutely fantastic um you know i mean it, we can't always you can't always hit it out of the park first at bat that's for sure so no. not not every not every <laughs> not every genre uh is gonna be perfect with every movie that that follows its uh its equation for success that's for sure Mm -hmm. very true um Um, i did see another movie uh very recently actually which i mm -hmm. think i could be wrong but i think it fits in in this one this one's a little bit more confusing this is called the history of time travel have you heard of it i don't i have not so it's uh it's on uh amazon prime it's Mm -hmm. a mockumentary Mm-hmm. So it, it starts off, it's like a documentary. They're talking about the inventor of time travel uh, right. who invented the time machine. It, it's this guy uh, who's working on it during World War II. He's, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a secret project. He, well, he's working on it his entire life. And then World War II ends. The, the U.S. starts the space race with Russia. So they mm-hmm. kind of just stop the project. So he, he's forced to stop. And then after he dies in the 80s, his son discovers his notes, all of his research, and finishes mm-hmm. the project on himself, creates right. a time machine out of an Atari. And so <laughs> his son actually invents the time machine, and that's what the documentary is talking about. So what right. the guy does is he goes into the past and saves his mother from dying when he was a child because she had polio okay. and she died. So he, he got... Uh, uh, what, what's it called? He, uh, he he gets a vaccination for polio, goes back in the past. Uh-huh. Then all of a sudden, what's cool is the documentary starts over. It's no longer about that. Uh, it's similar, but now the documentary starts over and it's about the guy who researched time travel during World War II. And, but his wife didn't die and she had two sons actually now. Like mm-hmm. now, now all of a sudden there, there's a second son, but she dies anyway later on. And so they go back in time again to save her from dying. And the documentary keeps restarting. And every time they go back in the past, the documentary starts over again, which is really cool. So like the documentary, it's not about each time to go into the past. It's about like each mm-hmm. time they do the documentary is about that reality. And then um, all of a sudden, <laughs> they decided to give the time machine that they fixed to their dad during world war two. Like that they like before he did all the research for it, they just go back in time. Like here, here, here's your time machine that you're working on. And Mm. then now the, this documentary is about the adventure of time of time travel. And then the Soviets steal it and fuck everything up. And they're, they're like, way ahead in space race the soviets are the first to land on the moon and it's just it's pretty crazy yeah there's a episode of uh, star trek the next generation called cause and effect i think it is mm. uh, uh neil have you seen that one yes and i do believe it's cause and effect okay yeah and it's kind of uh kind of the same where like uh it restarts the episode i think three or four times as you're going through it um and just the the subtle changes that they make in their decisions um to try and get out of the the problem that they're having so that sounds like a time loop yes absolutely yeah 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 um but like it alters it based on what they do Mm -hmm. and i believe kelsey Grammer 
guest stars in that episode well, for gotta, five seconds. Well, yeah. that's just a, that's a panty dropper if Kelsey yeah, Grammer's yeah. in it. I mean, you know, game over, baby. Yeah. Game over. <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to buy you dinner. Shit, Jesus. Um, so the last one we wanted to uh, last one we wanted to highlight was uh, predestination. Uh, in time travel, and uh, originally, remember we had talked about Interstellar mm-hmm. uh, uh, being the uh, most recent example of that. That would be well known. Uh, so, Ian, I know you were kind of going off with the uh, lesser known ones right now. So, uh, which ones did you have for this? Predestination. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's true. That, that is one. That is. Yeah. So, yeah, qu- quest, question for you: Would the movie Final Destination, <laughs> even though oh, no, 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 we as the audience go in a linear fashion, right. but it everybody meets their ultimate end? Mm-hmm. I I think I have, I don't think I've actually seen one of those, but uh, they all die like because they're supposed to die, right? <laughs> that's the premise. Uh, that's unrelated. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that, the, the, okay. The, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> really remember those movies. I think they like cheat death, and then death yeah. is just like, oh hell no, and just makes it like death. Like, do, do they cheat? De- I never really watched the I series. Did know. you? You watched it a little bit, right, Gary? No, I mean, oh, like I thought it's like a couple of movies, and I think it's they're, a lot of movies. Yeah, yeah there's like I five they, of them. Yeah. yeah, don't they all die in the end? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe know. spoiler alert <laughs> maybe question mark no. we only watch really great movies or movies that are so fucking horrible yeah we just love them. We, we try not to watch any movie in the middle in the middle yeah, yeah. there's no in, in between <laughs> malcolm in the middle hate it wouldn't watch it uh, that's actually one of the best tv series oh made, okay so you shut your dirty mouth again <laughs> twice well, in an episode i've told you to shut your dirty mouth okay you know what i'm gonna do oh. i'm gonna make you watch every neil breen movie back to back to back to back you to back. already pretty much did that but it was like one one every weekend for five weeks straight. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> so paradox or predestination, uh, predestination, predestination time travel. Uh, yes, there's a movie called Predestination, which is not mm-hmm. the prequel to Destination, and it's five sequels. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, no, uh, what it's about? Uh, I mean, uh, there's no way I could explain this movie without getting into just straight up spoilers. So okay. should fine. I or? Yeah, go ahead. It's okay. 2014. People should have seen it. <laughs> All right. It's their own fault if they haven't. So it this is the story of a woman named Jane. She was uh, placed at an uh, orphanage. No, she didn't know her parents. She was just placed at an orphanage. And she grows up. And when she's about 20 years old, she meets some mysterious stranger. They fall in love immediately. And then they have sex, and then the stranger disappears. But he knocked her up, so she has she's pregnant now. During the pregnancy, she, uh, she there's some complications, and the the baby's fine, but her uterus, her vagina, everything is just destroyed. And it turns out that she actually has two sets of genitals. She also has a penis, so. Uh, so they reconstruct everything, make a penis. So now Jane is now John. She she's a man now. Uh, now does she what, go back in time and fuck herself? Is that what we're gonna get to? <laughs> that's exactly what. We're gonna God get to. damn it! <laughs> God damn it! I can't believe it. I've never made you watch this before. It's a fucking weird movie. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, her baby actually ends up getting stolen too. By the way, that's important. So, uh, so sh- this sucks. So she goes to a bar and tells this entire story to the bartender. Bartender says, "Okay, that's really interesting." So here's the thing: I am a time traveling secret agent, and uh, so we're we're As almost like- all bartenders are, usually, yeah. <laughs> so he actually sends John back in the time to kill the guy that fucked over, fucked him over, fucked his life over. And so he goes back in time and then meets Jane, his former self, and knocks her up and gives. Uh, and so he, he knocks himself up in the past. And then um, the bartender, who, who's that guy, what, while that's going on, he steals the baby, kidnaps the baby, and sends it into the orphanage back when. So basically. Jane John knocked himself up with himself, herself. That may be one of the worst premises I've ever heard. <laughs> so so technically, he bore himself. Yeah, he he, he uh, just he exists. Me. For... He birthed himself essentially. <laughs> yeah, he, he had sex with himself and then birthed himself. Like he, that's he what had it, sex that with like himself and gave birth to himself. 
Okay. One of the funny thing is is um, when you were originally telling me about this, I was like, oh, I've never seen that. But I went back and I watched the trailer, and I did see this, actually. I got, oh, to, see really? it oh. at the, I got to see it at the South by Southwest premiere, and I remember this because Ethan Hawke was there. And oh, really? I remember him specifically. He was talking about... I can't remember the name of the person who wrote it, but... Um, he was, he, he was trying to, they were, somebody in the audience had asked him to explain, they're like, so this, you know, the synopsis here, like this is, it's very in, it's very detailed and there's a lot of twists and turns as most time travel films are. So can you explain to us, uh, you know, how did your character this and this and that, and just watching him try to just explain the rudimentary uh-huh. factors of the film was just hilarious. Cause he kept, he would repeat himself three sentences later because he was he was just so confused. He acted through the entire movie at the end of him talking. He just finally huh. admitted, honestly, I was confused the entire fucking time huh. that the movie was filming. He was like, I, I still to this day, there's parts of it. I just don't understand. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, I really enjoyed making it, you know, and he uh, went well, off. Well, his, his role <laughs> is, is kind of, yeah, it was pretty confusing. Like, I mean, I can see <laughs> from like actor, his point of view. He didn't even understand what was I, going I on. I kind of get it. Maybe he, he didn't watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> anywho, as I think, oh, man, I think everybody could agree. This is by far the most complicated and. Yes. Time travel. Just difficult, just a difficult episode and topic to talk about just because there's there's so many there's so many twists and turns and so many things looping around and oh god um anyway so uh, we are running out of time so uh we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping up here but i do want to go around really quick i do want to get um everybody's favorite uh or uh, favorite or top two favorite time travel films okay. uh, of all time so neil let's start with you well for me uh i think one of my personal favorite time travel movies uh, is actually a documentary. It's the 2000 mm-hmm. film Idiocracy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the premise. I absolutely love how it was written. I just love everything about that movie. That would be my pick, uh, Idiocracy. Anything, Idiocracy. With Mi- anything with Mike Judge is always a, a solid way to go. Absolutely. So agreed. agreed. Uh, 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 Ian, what about you? Um, I will go with uh, 12 Monkeys. Okay. All right. As your favorite time travel film. Yeah. Your favorite of all time? Really? Okay. Yeah, definitely. I thought you were going to go with Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, uh, biggest eye roll ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because, you know, it's unique. It's the first one of that type mm-hmm. uh, sure. with the never-ending loop. And, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, it's, it ends with, a, like, a big, um, you know, plot twist. Absolutely, man. Uh, Gary, how about you? Uh, for uh, you know, I'm going to have two recommendations for sure. movies. Um, one of them is going to be the final episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation, which is a two-parter called "All Good Things." That's an episode, not a movie. Uh, well, it's a it's an hour and a half, or hour and forty five minutes. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, and, all right. Um, it, it's it. Not only does it really brilliantly wrap up probably the best show on television. Uh, but uh, it's also a very interesting. Uh, I thought that was Friends. No, uh, I, Friends. Ugh, ugh. Um, it, it's also a friends. very interesting time travel episode because Captain Jean Luc Picard has to go through three different or four different time periods um, and solve a, uh, a a time paradox r- riddle, um, and it's it's just really great. Um, how about and then, my favorite movie. <laughs> and then, okay, so movie, I'm going to recommend uh, Mr. Destiny, which is, I think, a 1990 movie with uh, Jim Belushi. That's your favorite time travel movie of all time? I thought we were doing recommendations. <laughs> no, we're doing that at the end. I was just asking for everybody's favorite. <laughs> oh, favorite is Back to the Future, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, come on, that's easy. <laughs> Well, we got your what, recommendation what are we doing out of the way. Here? Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, so Neil, now you know that he, you know, he won't steal yours this week. So that's that's good. true. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, go ahead and Whoops. just finish. Here we go. It's, a, it's, it's all right. Do you want to go ahead and finish your the recommendation? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Destiny uh, is a Jim Belushi movie. Um, it's got Michael Caine in it as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's just really an interesting story because the guy kind of has a chance to go back and fix. Um, not hitting the home run during his high school year and all the changes that that change that that makes in his life. Mm -hmm. And he comes to kind of discover that even though he wasn't as successful, um, uh, financially as he would have been, uh, he did have a a much richer life 
for for being who he was. Uh, it also has John Lovitz in it. And if John Lovitz, if you're listening, if you want to come on our podcast, feel free to. Absolutely. Uh, that, that invitation yeah. is always <laughs> extended to John Lovitz. We, we have the perfect name for that <laughs> podcast. A cup of coffee with John Lovitz. Yes, a cup of just, coffee with John Lovitz. Just every episode is going to have John Lovitz on. I'm we'll sold. just talk about John Lovitz for every episode. Yeah. yeah. We'll just talk about him. You don't even have to do that. <laughs> I mean, like, so many of his movies and work. Uh, I tell you, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm I want to listen to that I'm, every day. I, I'm in all the way. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Uh, all right, cool. Awesome, yeah, Gary. Yeah. Thanks. We'll check that out. Um, I guess my... My personal favorite is is still out, out of all the I, I I do have to go with Back to the Future too. Um, it's just T O O or T W O. Back to the Future two, I think it was. I would assume it was T W O. But I mean, are you saying Back to the Future also? Oh no 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 okay. no! I was just saying back the second Back okay. to the Future the okay. sequel. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Not yeah. Back to the Future also. Okay. No no no. Um, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's just <laughs> it's the Roman numeral yes, for two. Yes. I'm pretty sure is on the on the title card. Um, but for for me, that one had always uh, that had always been my favorite. I love it when they keep the same storyline, but they are jumping between right, different yeah. time periods, and you can still see the same characters mm-hmm. um, uh, playing throughout the entire uh, series. So a series of events. So I, I really I really enjoy that um, for my own personal one. Um, God, that, that's that that's hard though. I would have said Groundhog's Day, but we had so much controversy it's about a that today with, film. with the time loops yeah. um, that I, I will leave that out, even though. It's my favorite. I mean, it's a Bill Murray film. film. It's my favorite Bill Murray movie of all time. It's Johnny's favorite birthday movie. Let's just. It is. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, my birthday is on Groundhog's Day. So if you want to send me a present on February 2nd, I'd appreciate it. Yep. I'd love you forever. I'll I'll send you I'll send you some some naked naked pictures and. Yep. Some bath water. Yeah. We can can have a good time and it'll be great. Yep. We'll 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 be closer than you ever thought we could or would be more. Or legally possible. Or legally possible. <laughs> God, maybe I should shut up now. Um, cool. So let's. Uh, we will skip into recommendations uh, for everybody to check out uh, for the week. So uh, Gary, I guess you had already gone. Um, we'll just loop back around. Um, my recommendation for this week here, based on the time travel topic, um, I am going to recommend uh, for those of you that have. I'm going to have to rec. I will have to recommend too. I'm sorry. Um, I will have to recommend Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, uh, okay. just because the third one did recently come out, and uh, I, I still I still want to see it. Um, if you guys weren't forced to watch this in your high school history classes, we all had those history teachers that were also coaches mm. that just <laughs> only taught lessons like three days out of the week, and the other two days it was YouTube videos yep. or watching. You watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Well, they didn't from have Brave. YouTube when we were in high school, Johnny, because you <laughs> yeah, say we're did. old. Didn't, didn't they? That came around in 2005. Well, then our senior year they had it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I guess just where, where would we be getting clips from online and Well, they had these things called libraries, and you would go no, there no, and no, like no, no, pull no, no, videos. No. There were, you could still get clips online prior to that. Um, Kazaa. <laughs> just go to askjeeves.com. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, I wrote a scathing letter to ask.com when they took rid of Jeeves. <laughs> I bet you did. Yeah. Did they reply? It was like a page. In, uh, I don't think they did, no. Okay. It was really disappointing. That, I would love it if for our next episode, or at least the next one, Ian comes back on, that you would you could find that note and then read it to us. I, I will see if I can. Okay. Uh, it was, I want you to do that. It was like 20 years ago. I'll see if I can find it, though. God. Okay, maybe you won't have it anymore. Um, but yeah, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, as far as time travel goes, probably, if not one of the easiest if not the easiest uh, uh, timelines and stories based on time travel to follow. Um, so if you're just looking for a good laugh and, um, and looking to, to be good to each other, then, uh, then be you know, excellent to each other. Be, be, thank you. Be excellent to each other. <laughs> Jesus then. Christ. John. Rock out with your cock out to Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Um, the one that I, the one that I would actually recommend is a, it's a cult classic and I'm sure you've probably heard of it at this point. Um, but Donnie Darko, if, uh, mm-hmm. if none of you have seen that yet, I won't go into that one cause it's Definitely. so good of a movie that I don't want to spoil the end. Uh, even though it's, it's been over a decade since they made it. So, uh, yeah, those would be my recommendations for this week. Um, Neil, how about you? Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, um, but if you haven't seen it, uh, my recommendation my recommendation this week is going to be Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, it's just okay, such a well done movie. Uh, yes, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt. Um, it's a Looper movie. It repeats the same day. Spoiler alert! But 
I think it still falls under this category, and that's my recommendation. Oh yeah, baby. Good choice. Good that choice. Groundhog Day, or yeah, this they might be. The, they might be. The, I'm gonna have to change my my answer. Uh, Ian, what about you? Uh, mine's actually a short film. You can find it on YouTube called the mm-hmm. One Minute Time Machine. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's real short. Don't give too much away it, on that. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it's just a guy who who tries to pick up a girl uh, just on a park bench, and he has mm-hmm. a, a time machine that has a big red button on it that takes him back one minute, and so he he just oh. tries to hit on her, and every time he says something wrong that she reacts negatively, he just hits that button and goes back one minute and changes his game until he gets the right results, and it is hilarious. Okay. It's a three and a half hour movie, though. Oh, God. It's a a, sh- <laughs> a short film in a TV series? I don't know how, to, how would that work. <laughs> Speaking of, if you go back the one minute, technically Galaxy Quest would also be a time travel movie. Huh? Think so. Oh, yeah, think about it. Okay, yeah. Think about it. Neil knows yeah. what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Omega device. The Omega, the Omega goes device. back, what, 18 seconds or something? So oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Man. Seven seconds. I can't remember. I need to rewatch uh, that. <laughs> it's just it's just always on TV. I was I was watching it a couple days ago. Anyways, um, cool guys. Well, once again, we want to thank uh, Ian Webb, host of uh, podcast Movie So Bad They're Good, and the Facebook group Movie So Bad They're Good Midnight Cult Classics and Camp for joining us. Uh, yeah, Ian, we you. hope to have you back again. Thank you for your time today, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Nice>. And. <laughs> uh, for all of us here at I Don't Give a Flick, I'm Johnny. I'm Gary. And I'm Neil. Stay classy, everybody. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Leadfeather production. Copyright Leadfeather Productions 2020.